Welcome to the MedGen webinar series hosted by the Medical Genomics Program at the University of Toronto. Our names are Anjali, Harpreet and Victoria, and I will be your narrator for part one. Today, our topic is optical genome mapping, past, present and future. In part one of our webinar, our goal is to introduce optical genome mapping, summarize the history of the technology and describe how optical genome mapping works. To learn more about the impact, the latest research, and details about the future of optical genome mapping, check out our second video. Structural variations refer to large-scale structural alterations in the genomic DNA resulting from chromosomal rearrangements. Different types of structural variants include deletions, duplications and or insertions, inversions, and translocations, as well as copy number variations. These variants are responsible for many diseases and are notably associated with many cancer types and developmental disorders. What is puzzling about the cytogenetic analysis of these variations is that we are using the same old laborious detection techniques that we used decades ago, including karyotyping, microarray, and fluorescent in situ hybridization. In such a scenario, optical genome mapping provides a Swiss army knife solution by encompassing all three traditional sets into one single technique, along with the added benefit of detecting variants that existing technologies would otherwise miss. To better understand the utility and importance of optical genome mapping, let's look at a hypothetical case study. Patient A has recently given a biopsy to further investigate a potentially cancerous tissue. Their biopsy samples are sent to numerous centers to perform several different analyses, including histology, DNA sequencing, karyotyping, fluorescence in situ hybridization, and chromosomal microarray analysis, to name a few. Patient A's doctor, Dr. B, waits a minimum of two weeks to get the results back. The results indicate two major chromosomal aberrations resulting in a translocation and indicative that patient A's biopsy sample does contain cancerous tissue. Based on these results, Dr. B suggests a first-line therapy, but unfortunately patient A's condition worsens. Unknown to Dr. B or patient A, Patient A's cancer actually had an additional small partial duplication, which allowed the cancer to evade the prescribed therapy. In complicated situations like this one, optical genome mapping presents as a promising alternative to existing test methods. Not only can optical genome mapping reveal the full scope of genomic variations within a cancer sample, but also has a shorter turnaround time. This can allow healthcare professionals like Dr. B to treat their patients faster with therapies more likely to successfully treat their cancer. Before we look at how optical genome mapping works, let's quickly peek into the past to see how this technique has evolved over time. The optical genome mapping technique was pioneered in 1993 by a group of researchers who demonstrated its use in constructing ordered physical maps of chromosomes of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. In this first iteration of the technique, the chromosomal DNA to be mapped was fixed on molten agarose between a cover slip and a microscope slide. DNA molecules were then cleaved by restriction enzymes and subsequently visualized by fluorescent microscopy-based techniques. However, this method of fixing the DNA on molten agarose really affected the quality of image capture. To solve this problem and more, in 1995, researchers fixed DNA molecules between glass surfaces and treated with certain chemicals to give it a positive charge. This significantly improved the size resolution of optical mapping, in which fragments as long as 30 kilobases to fragments as small as 800 base pairs could be sized. The year 1998 marked the design of the first automated system of optical mapping using the fluid fixation effect. This approach was based on the evaporation effect of a drying droplet that can elongate and fix DNA molecules to charged surfaces. In addition, the system was robust with robotics-based sample processing and automated fluorescence microscopic imaging. Over the subsequent years, this methodology was further improved and in 2004, it was demonstrated that optical mapping can be achieved by direct imaging of individual DNA molecules and localization of multiple sequence motifs on the molecules instead of restriction fragmentation. 
The next major breakthrough in OGM was in the year 2007, when optical mapping was coupled with nanocoding technology. In this system, nanoscale devices were used for sample loading, biochemical labeling, and its detection to improve the accuracy and throughput of optical mapping. The next set of milestones in the OGM timeline marked the commercialization of this technology with the first generation system launch in 2010 by OpGen. By 2016, the second generation systems evolved with double enzymes to improve the resolution of optical mapping and led to the launch of IRIS system by BioNanogenomics. The current third generation Sapphire system has been on the market since 2017, launched by the same company, BioNanogenomics. Sapphire chips employ massively parallel nanochannels that linearize long labeled DNA molecules, allowing the Sapphire instrument to directly image DNA samples. The system has been well received by the scientific community. The number of changes and innovations that optical genome mapping has gone through is evident from the timeline. In case the timeline flew by very fast, the next section of our webinar focuses specifically on how optical genome mapping works. In optical genome mapping, DNA loci recognized by restriction enzymes can be fluorescently labeled, generating unique barcodes for identifying different chromosomes and regions within chromosomes. In a typical optical genome mapping workflow, the first step is to extract intact long DNA molecules from the tissue sample. This is followed by labeling the long DNA molecules at specific sequence motifs with fluorophores. Next, these long tag DNA molecules are then linearized or stretched, which is achieved by subjecting the fluorescently tagged DNA to electrophoresis in a nanochannel. A nanometer range channel will allow passage of a single DNA molecule, easily avoiding any secondary structure formations and enabling high throughput. While the DNA molecule traverses through the nanochannel, high resolution images are taken using a fluorescent microscope, as seen here. Computational algorithms are then used to convert these high resolution images into DNA molecule information and assembled into a consensus genome de novo. This consensus genome is later compared to the DNA sequence order of a reference genome to detect both numerical and structural anomalies, such as copy number variants, large balanced and unbalanced structural variants, repeat contraction disorders, and multiple repeat expansion disorders. The detection range is between 500 base pairs and whole chromosomes. The final genomic report returned by OGM is in the form of an interactive circus plot. A genome-wide circus plot is a circular plot of all 24 chromosomes, 22 autosomes and X and Y chromosomes. The outermost band of the plot represents each individual chromosome, and different colored dots in the boxes underneath represent different colored structural variations. Deletions are represented by orange dots, and similarly blue dots are inversions, teal dots are insertions, purple dots are duplications, and pink lines represent translocations. The purple line in the box underneath represents the copy number status of the chromosomes, with each peak representing a CNV call. By looking at the CNV track in this plot, we can conclude that the sample has two copies of all 22 autosomes, one copy of X and one copy of the Y chromosome. But there seems to be a lot going on in this section of the plot. We can zoom into this region, and now we can clearly see that there is a translocation between chromosomes 6 and 9, conducted by deletions in both chromosomes. There is also a significant deletion in chromosome 7. We can further examine these structural variations in the genome browser. The deletions in the P arm of chromosome 7 are represented as the red boxes, and using the blue reference bar, we can determine the location of the deletion. Now it's time to take a quick knowledge test. How does OGM detect structural variants? OGM detects structural variants by labeling DNA using unique barcodes. 
Images of these barcodes are taken as the DNA moves through a nanochannel, and these images are compared to the pattern of barcodes upon a reference genome to detect the structural changes to the sample genome. Which structural variants is OGM able to detect? Optical genome mapping can detect copy number variants, large balanced and unbalanced structural variants, repeat contraction disorders, and multiple repeat expansion disorders, ranging from 500 base pairs to whole chromosomes. What are the major structural variations that you notice in this plot? Is it a three-way translocation between chromosome 2, 21, and 12, a loss of chromosome X, duplications and deletions in chromosome 6, or all of the above? If you guessed all of the above, you are correct. Here we see the three-way translocation between chromosome 2, 21, and 12. Here is the loss of chromosome X. And lastly, here are the duplications and deletions on chromosome 6. Thank you for watching part one of our webinar series focusing on optical genome mapping. To learn more about the impact of optical genome mapping, the latest research, and details about the future of optical genome mapping, check out our second video.